An important thing that we also have to cover for this particular chapter is something known as the electron microscope. So before we talk about the electron microscope, we have to talk a little bit about the problems with light microscopy or the problems using a light microscope. Now, I'm just drawing out a light microscope here. Light microscope obviously uses light or visible electromagnetic wavelengths to be able to, to make us visualize or to see the specimen. The problem with the light wavelength is, if you can call it a problem, that is, uh, for example, you don't need to memorize this, but purple light has a wavelength of 400 nanometers and red light has a wavelength of 700 nanometers. This is the entire span of visible light, which is about 400 to 700 nanometers. And if you remember, resolution, which is the ability to distinguish two separate points or the sharpness of the image, uh, the formula for resolution is the wavelength of light divided by two. So violet light resolution will be 200 nanometers because it is 400 divided by two. And red light resolution is 700 divided by two, which is 350 nanometers. So remember I told you between these two values, which value is a greater resolution? The greater resolution is the smaller number, 200 nanometers, because you're able to see up to 200 nanometer images, but red light, you're only able to see up to 350 nanometers. So the problem with light microscopy is this. The best resolution you can achieve is 200 nanometers, which means to say that any structures that are smaller than 200 nanometers will not be able to be seen, or even if you are able to see them, they are not extremely clear. The image can be quite blurry, which means to say that, you know, you, you are not exactly sure what you are looking at. And another thing I told you was light is not able to hit extremely small structures like ribosomes. Therefore, it cannot be reflected into our eyes. Because remember, I told you in the previous video for this chapter, to be able to see something using light, light must be able to hit the object and the light must be reflected into our eyes. So if certain objects are very small, which are like ribosomes, the light wavelength uh, it will be very difficult for the light wavelength to hit the ribosome. And even if it does hit the ribosome, and even if it gets reflected into your eyes, because the structure is smaller than 200 nanometer, you will see something extremely blurry, or sometimes you might not even see anything at all. So that's the problem. So to be able to see very small structures, the wavelength of light is too long, so it cannot hit the ribosome. So the solution to this problem is we have to use something else, an electromagnetic wave that has an extremely low wavelength. Because when it has an extremely low wavelength, it will move like this, it fluctuates like zigzag, zigzag, zigzag very quickly at a high frequency, and it has a very high chance of hitting the ribosome so that we can visualize it. But the question here is, which wavelengths have a very high frequency and low wavelength? Scientists were presented with two choices, which are X-rays and electron beams. And they decided to use electron beams because electron beams, due to the fact that they carry negative charges, they can be focused using electromagnets. Because you want to focus the wavelength to hit the specimen in a certain way. For light, you can easily focus light using mirrors to reflect them. So for electron beams, we can use electromagnets to do the job. So that is why the electron microscope was invented. And that solved a lot of problems that the light microscopes could not solve. Now, what you have to know is, again, you do not need to memorize this in detail. I just need you to understand how it works. The principles of electron microscopy is very simple. You see, light works in such a way that the light hits the specimen, it goes through the lens, and then the image is magnified in our eyes. That's how it works. But electron beams do not work like that. You know, you, the electron beams cannot hit the specimen, and we cannot reflect the electrons into our eyes because, you know, you cannot see electron beams. You can see light, but you cannot see electron beams. So how does this work then? 
There are two ways in which it can work. Number one, we can shoot electron beams through the specimen so it passes through the specimen and the electrons that pass through the specimens are detected on a plate or a screen a special type of plate or screen that's one way of doing it and it will be able to produce images on the screen where you get this kind of white and black kind of image where the white areas means that the specimen uh, it's less dense less dense means less structures are concentrated in that area and the dark areas means that the area is more dense so you'll get these black and white images on the screen if you notice where i'm circling the electrons that can pass through easily through the specimen because there's very less dense area it's quite empty uh, that will produce the white areas but if you notice these two electron beams here, very few were able to pass through that specimen because that area was quite dense. So then in this case here, what it means that uh, that area will produce a black or darker image on the screen. Another way it can work is the electrons. We can uh, we can adjust the we can adjust the frequency of the electron beams, and we can make them reflect off the surface of the specimen so it's not going through the specimen it gets reflected off the surface and the reflected electrons will then be detected on a screen or plate or a sensor and in this case it doesn't produce an image of what's going on inside the specimen but it produces an image of the surface of the specimen and, and it and it is also black and white images as well the reason why you get an image of the surface is because the electrons were bounced off the surface so in this case this gives us the idea of the two types of electrons which are the transmission electron microscope and the scanning electron microscope the electron microscopes are extremely fancy by the way if your school has an electron microscope that's wow that's an amazing thing uh, most of the time electron microscopes are reserved for tertiary inst tertiary education institution that are specializing in microbiology or the study of cells in details so transmission electron microscope is where they allow the electron beams to pass through the specimen so they produce the image of the specimen's ultra structure or the structure within the cell inside the cell it tells us what's going on inside the cell or inside the specimen but scanning electron microscopes are what happens when the electron beams are reflected off the specimen surface and it produces a three-dimensional image of the surface of the specimen so scanning electron microscope will tell you what's going on on the surface of the cell or the specimen so transmission tells you what's going on inside the cell or the specimen. Scanning tells you what's going on on the surface. Transmission electron microscope has a resolution of 0 0.5 nanometers. But scanning electron microscope, because you kind of have to increase the wavelength a little bit so it bounces off the surface, the resolution is not as good as transmission electron microscope. Remember, the lower the number for resolution, the greater the resolution, by the way. So 0 0.5 nanometer is fantastic because you can see structures that are extremely small, almost to a molecular level by the way scanning electron microscope has a resolution of 3 to 20 nanometers not as good as transmission but still quite a decent resolution that it can achieve but light microscope as i've mentioned the maximum resolution was about 200 nanometers so immediately some students will uh, tell me that oh transmission electron microscopes and scanning electron microscopes are so much better than the light microscope because the transmission electron microscope can see uh, things which are extremely small uh, so in this case it might seem that the light microscope is useless compared to the transmission and an uh, scanning electron microscope but in reality the light microscope also has its uses now another very important thing that we must understand is i just want to show you six images over here um, 
of images taken using the transmission or scanning electron microscope. So the question is, are these TEM or SEM images? TEM means they are transmission electron micrographs taken using the transmission electron microscope. SEM is scanning. So the first one over here is quite obvious. You can see the structure inside the cell. Therefore, this is a TEM or transmission electron micrograph. The second one is a bacterium and you are able to also see the inside of the cell. You can see the cell surface membrane, by the way, the, that line inside the cell, um, because you can see two lines. The two lines at the border, one line represents the cell wall, the inner line represents the cell surface membrane usually. Uh, but it's not that clear here. So if you're able to see the inside, that is TEM as well. All right. The third one is obviously a red blood cell with the biconcave shape. But can you see the inside? No, you're able to see the surface where it's curving a little bit. That is SEM. The fourth one at the lower left corner, uh, that one is a macrophage. Uh, we, will, we will cover that in chapter 11, immunity, and that's the surface of the macrophage taken using the SEM. This one over here is a little bit weird. It has a kind of cuboidal, I don't know, I don't know if that's a cuboidal shape. I don't think it's cuboidal, but um, this is taken, this is a virus by the way, and that is taken using an SEM. You're able to see the surface. The last one, the sixth one, at the lower right corner is a plant cell. You're able to see the internal structures of the plant cell, and that is taken using a TEM, Transmission Electron Microscope. So I hope you're able to see the differences between the images taken using Transmission Electron Microscope and Scanning Electron Microscopes.